All right, guys, just a bit of an update. Um, see where we're at. So the cruise is still here. Got a heap of paperwork that I've been working through um, and just some final little fitment um, jobs on the cruiser. But essentially just waiting for paperwork. Here's where we're up to. All right, before we get into the cruiser, puffing a bit, I just pushed the um, bean out for a fly. I did my annual, or biannual every two years, basic flight review. So I went out with an instructor yesterday, which is really good because a bit of a timid pilot still, I guess, nursing the engine and that sort of thing. Um, we went up there and got a windscreen full of ground and things like that. I won't say too much, but no intentional spins in the Jabiru, of course. BFR, what did I learn there? Basically, um, the stick in the middle, what did he call it? That's the trick stick. So the joystick, that's the trick stick. Just use the rudder. Fly it with the rudder. Jabby's never flown so good, to be honest. Um, just using my feet a lot more in the turns and levelling things out. So I went out today, another hour and a half, um, just find myself a lake, so I've got a bit of a reference and um, figure eights, <coughs> climbing and descending turns, that sort of thing. So really good to, uh, yeah, enhance my skills. And the instructor that I went with is also my test pilot, so he can smack me on my wrist in the jab, if you like, for anything I'm doing wrong, um, because it won't be too long and be a whole new beast sitting underneath me. Okay, so for RA Oz in Australia, this is Recreational Aircraft Australia. Um, I've worked through all the paperwork. It's not a how-to, but it's sort of where I'm up to. I've got some notes here of things to do. All my cruiser information, all the pamphlets, you know, the, there's an RDAC and there's the Ray Allen trim motor, EFIS. I've just kept all the, all the pamphlets and information, service bulletins, video senders, the brake master cylinders. That's in my cruiser cruiser book, sort of my ready reckoner if you like, to go and get it all set up. I've got my Jabiru engine parameters, um, I'm going to laminate this, it's just in a folder for now. Um, what I do find, it's hard, like with the, M the MGL EFIS that you saw a picture of back here, you have to punch in the, the data. Say for argument's sake, EGT, exhaust temperature is, you know, maximum 700 degrees. If I accidentally type in 70 degrees, I'm going to get an alarm basically as soon as we take off or as soon as we start the engine. So you've got to get all the, the data correct and put into the computer. So I, I think I've done that. By the way, we have done ground runs, the engine starts and purrs like a kitten. Fantastic. Uh, I've got a, and once again, all this, these forms, one form sort of leads to another. So this form will tell you to attach three other items. So that's a pre-flight final inspection for amateur build aircraft. It does clearly start, there we go, in here. The aircraft must not be flown until a permit to test fly the aircraft is issued by the RA Oz Tech Manager in Australia. So once that application goes in, so that application needed the weight and balance, which is all this paperwork here for weight and balance. Um, another form there for test flying. I've got another form, must be at home, for proper aircraft registration. I was under the impression, I was paid, paid $80 for the last two years for that number. You can pay $120 for a specific number if it's available. I just paid the $80 and that was just a generic, sorry, not generic, that was just a generated number that they gave me. Then I find out it's, the aircraft's not actually registered. I've just pay, been paying to sort of have that number. Um, so hopefully, I can keep the same number because it's on the side of the aircraft. I assume that's how it works. $308, $308 that was, to, for initial registration. Then it's about $200 a year thereafter for the registration of the cruiser. Okay, the cruiser itself. Um, did the ground runs, fantastic. Engine fired up, the Jabiru six cylinder. So compared to the four cylinder, this engine's a lot smoother. Um, got my RPM indicating, I had a few little niggly MGL type issues, I guess, with the electronics. Um, but I'll talk you through that and show you where we're up to. Okay, at the front, I think I mentioned, <laughs> I think I mentioned it once, be once before, I just need to countersink these washers and also my spinner tracking. It's just slightly wobbling from what I've been told outside by my fire guard person. So there might be a bit of trial and error there, um, but I'll just loosen off these screws uh, the, other is, the other way to do it is, I guess, when the engine's running, just tap it with a China Graph pencil or something, it'll show you the high spot, and then just loosen the screws and tap it down. A bit archaic, but we'll get the spinner running 
as true as we can. So yeah, jab 3300. Oh, this morning I um, manufactured my oil cooler lips. So just some Al Angle rubber from Clark Rubber. Uh, burr Burr lips. Me being pedantic, I painted it all inside. Now this is offset in the cowl, so the oil cooler is a bit smaller. So I just made a dam on this side, just a bit of L angle and angled it out. Sat in black paint and riveted it all on. So I haven't put the cowl on yet, but this sort of just gets out of the way. It can sort of bell mouth a bit if it needs to. Cooling's, cooling's gonna be a big thing, especially with number five back here because Something to do with the rotation of the prop. This will be the hottest cylinder, number five. So you've got one, three, and five on this side. Um, and then while I was running, the, I, obviously I drained the battery. Did about five or six starts while I was setting up my RPM. So I've got two RPMs, which seem to confuse the issue. Um, the manual sort of says I can. So I'm running from my magneto into the RP, two RPM slots, so both magnetos. However, the gauge seems to get confused and one thing I don't like about that setup is both magnetos, it's those two leads there, RPM1, RPM2, if the RDAC was to fail to earth and earth those two out, I'll lose my engine. So in the process of thinking about all that, my RDAC's failed. So if we look inside here, put the power on. Charge it up, usually takes, I don't know, 10 or 15 seconds. And you can see I've lost, I've lost RPM, oil pressure, oil temperature, CHT, EGT, fuel probes, and the radio, or the radio will come on with avionics, so the radio comes on. Um, so a quick call to MGL, and I've got no, I've got power, power at the plug and no green light. So somehow the RDAX failed after six engine runs. Um, yeah. Anyway, MGL Australia has been really good. They're going to send me a new RDAC. So that's in the mail. Also, I've been waiting on a data plate. So what I did this morning is knocked, so RAOs for part of registration was to have a data plate, which I've got one in the mail, but you can see there on the tail, I just knocked one up for the purpose of registration. And I'll put a pretty one on there, like a aircraft spruce one, when we're done. So now that I've done the oil cooler at the front, I was basically at that stage where the cow could go on. I was going to taxi it out to the hard stand, chock it, and um, wide, go max wide open throttle, um, check max RPM and any vibrations and oil temps and all that sort of stuff, and then we'd be ready to uh, ready to test flight part of that process, taxi it around, probably bed the brakes in a bit, and you know, nose wheel steering, not, not doing anything too silly, but just taxi it around. Might even go to the fuel bowser and fill it up. But now I'm waiting for the postman to come, one with the data plate, and two with the RDAC. That's the only thing holding me up. On my whiteboard behind me here, pretty clean. Countersink the, nose, the uh, spinner, uh, seal up the firewall, a couple of spots there, the nose wheel steering push rods, which I've got, to, I'll show you those over there, and RDAC fail. Right, so, rest of the aircraft, I got the spats off, the um, test pilot, you know, what he says goes, doesn't want the spats on there to test fly because they have an influence over the, I think they're, yeah, pretty long, 36 inches, um, has an influence over the trim of the aircraft. Apparently the test flights, you know, he just heads for the heavens, get up about 2,000 feet, checks the handling and comes back pretty much, nothing flash, and then we'll check the engine over. That'll be an exciting day once we get the magic bit of paper. If anyone wants anything specific, feel free to send me a message. I know when I was building, well, I still am building, I guess, um, you sort of wanted to get some real good detail of how things overlap and underlap. And, um, so if you want anything in particular, just flick me a message and I'm quite happy to go about things. Um, you know, rivet spacing, I'm not saying mine's perfect, but I managed to get it all together. So, it definitely would have helped me 
rather than trying to catch a glimpse as someone's, as I keep saying, you know, you might be wanting to see that strut joint and someone's showing you the wing leading edge, so you try and, try and pause it just to catch a certain, certain part. So if anyone's got any questions or specifics, quite enjoy showing off my baby um, and I'll help out any way I can, you know, with regards to how things go. Flaperons are all done, rigs complete. Windows are in. The windows actually settled down quite nicely. The um, that uh, Buner end tape, I can actually see it's popping out of there now. I might clean that up as well. Um, this was a bit whoop de doop. Now the the uh, butyl tape, sorry, has uh, just relaxed and melted down nicely to seal those off. So there you go. That's where we're at with the cruiser. Just waiting on paperwork which will give me permission to test fly it. Myself and Jared, the test pilot person, uh, will he'll initially fly it, and I guess the both of us. So Jared will initially fly it solo. Then I assume, well, I'd like to think we both go up, um, as we're both listed as test pilots, and then I get a bit of, uh, bit of training, yeah, between, the difference between the jab and the, the cruiser. Hopefully that won't take too long. Then I'm restricted to 25 hours, 25 hours by myself within 25 nautical miles of the airfield. We are basically all said and done. What I have got, one little job left to do, is off eBay I just got some gear, gear shift, these leather, leather boots. Um, just, and I went down to the, we've still got a boot maker in town believe it or not, a shoe repairer. And I'm going to put some Velcro on there for me. So I'm going to put these against the firewall and over those steering rods, which will um, cover those up nicely. So, that's where we're at at the moment. Hopefully in the next video, um, we're outside taxiing around. So, thanks for watching. Quick update. See you on the next one.